This episode is sponsored by Lino, the world's largest independent cloud computing provider. Stick around, I'll tell you how you can get $100 in credit on a new Lino account. Hey there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now today I want to look at how you can build a GPU accelerated supercomputer cluster in your home. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Now hopefully you've had a chance to watch my Raspberry Pi supercomputer video where I built a cluster of four Raspberry Pi boards showing you the basic architecture of how a much, much bigger supercomputer works, but actually you can practice and understand the, the architecture using just four Raspberry Pis. The difference is there is that was just about CPU cores. There was no GPU stuff. And today what I want to look at is how you can build a similar kind of supercomputer cluster but using NVIDIA Jetson boards which means you can also use GPU acceleration and in fact actually most big supercomputers actually have a combination of CPU and GPU resources so that the work can be done as fast as possible. Now when you write a computer program it's the first simplest ones are sequential programs. Step one, load five into the value of A. Step two, add 10 to the value of A. Step three, and you kind of go on step by step. And of course, these programs can reach millions of lines of code. However, they are executed sequentially. With the advent of multi-core uh, processors, the uh, concepts behind multi-threading programming became much more important. They have existed for many years before that, but they became much more important. Now, I have a whole video on multi-processing, multi-threading, and multitasking, and I really would suggest you go and check that out. But basically, with multi-threading, you can try to do two things at once. Now, the problem is not everything can be done in this parallel way. For example, if you wanted to cook some fried potatoes, the potatoes need to be peeled and chopped, and then they need to be fried. You can't fry them while you are peeling and chopping them. But if you wanted to have some eggs alongside your potatoes, then the eggs can be cooking while the potatoes are cooking, so two things can happen in parallel. So the real secret to get the most resources out of modern computers is not to just do things sequentially, but to also do them in parallel using multi-threading. Now, of course, a normal computer, let's say a desktop, might have what, four cores, you might have eight cores, 16 maybe, but you're kind of around there, a smartphone, eight cores, a Raspberry Pi, maybe four cores. And the problem is even if you pick one of these really, really big servers, and I've got a couple of videos on, on server chips that maybe have up to 80 cores, at some point you limit the number of cores. Now supercomputers want to use thousands of cores. So the only way to do that is to join multiple computers together and get them to work together. And that's what I showed in that Raspberry Pi cluster video. But now we're gonna do the same thing, but using a GPU. Now GPUs are really interesting when it comes to parallel programming because a GPU might have, you know, hundreds of cores, even thousands of cores. So even on an NVIDIA Jetson Nano, there are 128 GPU cores, which is greater than even some of the biggest a server CPU chips you can get. We've already got 128 cores here on a, a nice small board, $59 for the two gigabyte version. And of course, if you go right up to the big offerings from uh, NVIDIA, then you can get thousands of cores inside of a GPU. Now the way GPU programming works is this. If I have, let's say, 128 values, and I want to take the square root of every value. Well, in a normal program, you might just say, well, let's take the square root of value one, let's take the square root of value two, let's take the square root, and you just go on and on through the list. If you were doing it multi-threaded, then you say, well, I've got four cores, I've got 128 values, let's just split this up into four lots of 32, and then each thread says, well, let's do the first one, let's do the second one, and you get four times the benefit, but still it's doing it sequentially. Now, because a GPU has got so many cores, you can say, let's do all 128 in one go. And so when you write a GPU program, what you're actually saying is, please do this one operation, the same operation, on every single value of this block of memory. And today what I'm going to show you is a program that takes the square root and then doubles it and then takes the square root again and then doubles it and does that a few thousand times. Now, of course, that can show how the inaccuracies of a square root and then doubling it can show the divergence. In fact, I'm just doing it because I want a, C a GPU load that I can load onto the GPU and then just show that the GPU has done some work. Obviously, there's lots and lots of complicated things you can do. Supercomputers and this kind of modeling get used for what, weather forecasting and a molecule mapping and for nuclear explosion stuff and for all kinds of, you know, the 
music, medicine, all these kind of things that happen in parallel, we're just going to take the square root because we're simple folks here. So what I'm going to be using is four NVIDIA Jetson balls. And I've got two NVIDIA Jetson Nanos with two gigabytes of RAM. I've got an NVIDIA Jetson Nano with four gigabytes of RAM. And I've got an NVIDIA Jetson Xavier NX. I've done a review of all of those boards here on this channel. But the great thing about NVIDIA's boards is they're all compatible from a software point of view. So I can use all of these together now in this supercomputer cluster with GPU acceleration. And the software works the same on all of them. Just each board brings more resources to the game and allows you to up your performance just by uh, using a different board or by adding more boards. This episode is sponsored by Linode, the largest independent cloud computing provider. Whether you're an experienced developer, user, or just starting out, you can build on Linode. Start from scratch and fully customize your server for any application or use their one-click apps to deploy game servers, websites, personal VPNs, and much more. Whether you just need a basic website for your portfolio or a beefy GPU instance for AI, scientific computing, and computer graphics projects, Linode has the flexibility and the scalability to meet your needs. If you run into any trouble during setup, Linode comes with amazing 24-7 customer support by phone or ticket, along with hundreds of guides and tutorials to help you get started. Sign up today at linode.com slash Gary Explains and get $100 in credit on your new Linode account. The link is in the description. The problem with supercomputer programming is that there is an overhead to distributing the load to the computers. Obviously, a CPU and a GPU working locally in its own memory with its own caches can work very, very quickly. To send a job over the network and then for it to get processed and send it back actually takes quite a long time in relative terms. So if the controller node said to node number one, please calculate the square root of 49, by the time it makes a network connection, sends it over there, that program fires up, starts to do the square root of 49, sends back the results, the controller node says, okay, thank you very much. Well, that's, that's a long time in computing terms. So the art to supercomputer programming is to make sure that the load is sent out and that the nodes are busy, much, much busier than actually it takes to just send uh, the overhead to send the data across and, and start the work off. So in this example, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with thousands of numbers and we're gonna say to one node, please use your GPU in parallel to work out the square root of all these numbers. And then as we add more nodes, we're gonna say, well, now that we've got two nodes, we can split the number of numbers in half, send one half to one computer node, one half to the other computer node, and then they can run in parallel on their GPUs. And we're gonna keep doing this until we get all four boards running. We can see the difference in performance as we spread this load out across our supercomputer cluster. And just remember, these calculations are actually happening on the GPU. So the way it works is that the CPU basically says, OK, send off this to node number one. Node number one, the CPU receives it, networking, memory allocation, all that stuff. It then says to the GPU, hey, GPU, go and do all the square root of all of these things in parallel using your 128 cores in the case of the Jetson uh, Nano, and then give me the results. And the CPU takes over and sends it back to the uh, controller node. OK, enough talk. Let's actually go over to my GPU accelerated supercomputer cluster and actually see this in action. OK, so here we are. and I'm showing an overview of all the boards in my little cluster here. So each one is showing the resources. And this is using a little program called JTOP, like Jetson Top, which gives you kind of an overview of everything that's going on. Very, very good program, highly recommended. One on the top left hand corner here is the Jetson uh, Xavier NX. Then this one here in the top middle is the Jetson Nano with four gigabytes, and then the other two are the Jetson Nano with two gigabytes. Now I'll be using MPI, which is the message passing uh, interface, and that's a very simple library that you can use to run, write a program that talks to many, many nodes in a cluster. Uh, and I use that also when I did that uh, Raspberry Pi uh, program. So what we're gonna do is, first of all, I'm gonna show you, I've got a thing called a cluster file, which shows me which files, which cluster, which nodes it wants to talk to. So we'll use cluster file one because it's just got one. Now, all of my uh, nodes are in 51, 52, 53, and 54. So this is gonna to talk to one node in the cluster. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run time command because that allows us to see how long something, how long something will take. MPI exec is the program for executing an MPI program. And we're gonna to say to it, please use 
plus to file one. And what's the program want to run? Simple MPI, a small program that talks to the other uh, the other node and says, here's a GPU program for you to run. Please run this using NVIDIA's CUDA. So if we run this now, what we're going to see, first of all, let's change all of these to show the GPU activity, because that's the important thing here. GPU activity across the board at the moment is a uh, pretty minimal let's fire this off and as you can see a couple of things now quickly the gpu here is being used only on this one the other ones there's nothing happening we notice that we're dealing with 3,840,000 lots of numbers and if we quickly go here to the cpu we can see the cpu's hardly being used just the gpu's being used now this will finish after about 27 28 29 seconds we'll see what happens and then we're going to now try try this on multiple nodes and see what is the final outcome and there we have it 27.1 seconds and you can see the GPU now uh, is uh, stopped being busy and that now disappears off the edge of the graph. Okay, so that's how long it takes when you run it on one GPU. So it connected to that uh, board and it said run this on the GPU please didn't really hardly use the CPU just for the communication part now if we look at cluster file 2 well you'll be shocked see it's got two nodes in it 53 and 54 we can see here so now we're going to run exactly the same program but now we're going to say please do this on two boards okay and let's notice a few things running on two nodes it says down here now set also it's now reduced the amount of data it has to send to each node because we're splitting the job in half so it's 1,920,000 and now you can see also the two GPUs are very busy on two boards and look at that 14.8 seconds so roughly half the time to do that which is what you expect half the data half the data going to each node and the GPU being used in each one and next we can look at cluster file 4 course this is going to use all of our boards 51 52 53 and 54 so exactly the same thing again and we will see all four being used and you see running all four nodes now only 960,000 data being sent but look at this one in the top right hand corner here it's finished already on the Xavier because the Xavier is a much more powerful GPU than you get on the Jets and Nanos. And overall, it finished now in eight seconds. So we've gone down from 27 seconds to eight seconds. Now, because the Xavier is actually so powerful compared to the other three, what we can actually do, there's a, another cluster file here, and I've called it cluster file six, because what you can say here is this one here, 51, give it three slots. Pretend it's three machines. So in total, it will be six machines and one of them will be this one. And it's because it's got the much more powerful GPU, it can handle three times the amount of work. So again, same thing, run the program, but now let's say use cluster file six and we'll fire that off. And we can see now that this one is a bit busier than it was before. It's actually got that extra work, but it's still finished earlier. And now we're down to 5.6 seconds and all the other boards finished. So we've gone down from 27 seconds to running something on a single GPU on a Jetson Nano to 5.6 seconds running across four boards and utilizing the extra power inside the Jetson Xavier. Now, of course, you can imagine if you had four Jetson Xavier's or you had eight nodes or you had 10 nodes, of course, you can just keep multiplying up in. And there is a rule that uh, tells you how far you can multiply. That's called Amdahl's uh, rule. And we can do a video about that. If you're interested, please do leave a comment in the uh, sec in the comments below and I'll, I'll have a look at that. But look, we've gone from 27 seconds to 5.6. And imagine if it was 27 minutes to do whatever calculation it is that you were doing down to five minutes, 27 hours down to five hours. Obviously, these are significant changes. Uh, let's just run it again because I just like seeing all those GPUs running. And notice again here, it's not really the CPU that's being used, it's the GPU. Okay, look at that, 5.6 seconds. That's absolutely fantastic. So there you go, your very own GPU accelerated supercomputer. Okay, so there you have it. There is a GPU accelerated supercomputer cluster using four Jetson boards. Now, of course, you could do it with eight, you could do it with 16, you could do it with as many as you want to. And of course, this same topology the same idea could be used, you know, with PCs with much bigger GPU cards in them. Of course, you've got the difference in price, cooling and power requirements. And that's, of course, why things like the Jetson Nano are great, because what's $59 to buy one of the boards? You don't have to worry about the uh, cooling because it's all passive cooling with the big heat sink on it there. You don't have to worry about using too much electricity. You're not going to annoy your neighbours with a huge server farm sitting in your living room but you've actually learned the basics of how to use GPU accelerated uh, supercomputing in the comfort of your own home. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. 
And if you like these kind of videos, well, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.